time for me to continue this bizarre world. The bizarrest world of Chaos Head. Where the title music is horror ambiance in pure form. And the main character is a degenerate weirdo. Another week came, and with it, another school day. As usual, I headed to school with my head hung low, depressed as ever. Autumn was starting to come into full swing. The leaves of the trees in Shoto Park were slowly changing color, and I was starting to feel chilly in my short sleeve uniform. I supposed it made sense that I'd be surprised by the change of season, given I rarely went outside in the first place. I still hadn't really registered that summer had ended. My weekend had consisted of nonstop SO. Grim had kept on bugging me about Yua, but I just ignored him. I hadn't gotten an email from Yua since that first one. I hadn't replied to her first one either, so maybe she'd finally given up on me. <sighs> Again, no, I can't. I, I don't know. The dude, so... This main character is... He's a mess. He has moments where you can kind of relate to him in a way, and then there's other moments where, like, I literally want to punch him in the face. It is so complex. I don't hate him, by the way. For, for people that are listening to this, I don't hate the guy. I think. I'm just... I, I, I can't really hide my own personal feelings about this, okay? <laughs> so, you know. I really hoped that was the case. And for your case, I hope it's not. I hope it's more or less that, you know, she's still patiently waiting on you to respond. Whenever I talked to Yua, my feelings always got all jumbled up. Those interactions almost made me have a little hope. But there was no point in being so optimistic. At the end of the day, I was just an otaku freak. My whole life, I'd never had any success with 3D, so I'd just given up on it. And the, and the last little moment where you're, you're having this moment where there is a legitimate sort of friendship kind of developing, and you are immediately giving up on it despite that? Honestly, that does add a little bit. It, it does add a little bit to his character that makes it kind of make sense. You come across, or you live your life, and you come across so many negatives. It's just back and forth, back and forth. Every little bit of time that you, every time you try to build up hope that something will change, and you're constantly having this thing thrown in your face that no, it's not going to change or it's going to stay negative. Yeah, that would wear down a lot of people. So in that regard, that is kind of relatable. But you have to have a little bit of hope. I want to believe that you can still have hope despite that. Unfortunately, we have a character that seemingly has just given up on it. And the thing is, it's interesting because he recognizes it. He recognizes that there is something good happening, but he doesn't want to believe in it. There it is. Please, don't give me any hope. Please, don't have any hope for me. Literally what I was saying. Just as I thought that, someone tapped my shoulder from behind. I figured it was Nanami or Misumi-kun, but when I turned around, I was shocked. Yua? <sighs> there she is. Apparently she was chasing you. Yua was looking at me with a smile on her face. Her cheeks were a little flushed. Why was she so out of breath? She was trying to catch up to you, bro. <laughs> Trying to catch up with us, huh? No. Had she really not given up yet? 
Does... Did, did, did she still have some hope left in me? Uh, good morning. You can say good morning! It only took you four days to say good morning. Hmm. You are interesting, you uh. Oh, we got your email. My main ca my main character just didn't want to respond. <laughs> what are you gonna tell her? I find myself I found myself nodding out of reflex. You are an incredibly patient girl. Holy crap. I almost feel sorry. I, I actually do feel sorry for you that you are interested in this main character that we are playing as. I actually feel bad for you. Although that is a relatable sort of thing, like you send an email to somebody, but you never receive a response, so you're con you're constantly like worrying if it's not even so much of an email. You send a message to somebody, and they either a don't respond or b you start panicking and re and start to think, wait, did they even get my message? Do I have to send it again? And then you're stuck in that endless loop, like, but well, wait, if I send it again, will that annoy them if they've already read it? It is constant. Seriously, what the hell did Yua want from me? Did she expect me to like her back? Did she want me to be her boyfriend? And then did she want us to live out some intimate, lovey-dovey fantasy together? There was no way I could do that. No way I could be that normal, no matter how hard I tried. I really wanted to, but it just wasn't possible. See, now this right here is immediately giving me a better insight into our main character. His degeneracy, in a way, I, 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 you know, maybe the degeneracy is probably not the best word for me to use it. His habits, his mentality, is connected to this level of disappointment, this negativity that he is. He is stuck in this, this pit, essentially. So, if things aren't going to get better, I may as well just indulge in the other stuff that won't judge me, basically. And he's struggling to have this realization that he needs to get himself out of this pit because he, he's too deep in right now. He's, he's too far deep right now into this pit. You know what? I'm just going to shut up. But this is giving me a better insight into the main character. I still didn't understand why Yua even liked me in the first place, which made it all the more impossible to trust her. So I just couldn't do it. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm stuck in my uh, mental. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm stuck in my mental pit. You're what? <laughs> That, yeah, she, she's noticed that I've just been standing there for... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, self-reflecting. Also, this one voice won't stop talking in my head. I don't know where the hell it's coming from, but he keeps talking. He's not even using my voice. Upon realizing that, I quickly started to walk away, leaving Yua behind. But before I could get very far, Yua had already caught up with me. And she's having kind of normal human-esque reaction. She's showing some level of worry, like, Hey, that person that I get along, that I think I get along with, didn't show up to school. Are they sick? Are they okay? You know? But... 
No, you're fine. Boku Tamanishka Goku Konai. And just outright telling her that you don't come to school. Okay. Hmm. The, hmm. Interesting phrasing. Everyone calls me a shut-in. He's not calling himself a shut-in. He his immediate thing is everybody else calls me a shut-in. And here's how I take that. Everyone calls me a shut-in, so I may as well be a shut-in. <gasps> Did that break the spell? You're totally disillusioned now that you know the truth, right? If so, I didn't mind. I'd never gotten my hopes up anyway. Go ahead and call me an otaku freak, and then after that, never talk to me again. There it is! There's an implication that this has happened before. It is him. Oh God, what, what's the what's the phrase I'm looking for? Would this count as a self-fulfilling prophecy? People assume, therefore I am. So this And her innocent response. Really? I'm I'm really I'm I'm happy. I'm glad I got to see you today. Like, look at that! This is actually... Okay, now I'm actually starting to get a little bit invested here. My complaint aside, this is already getting me a little bit more invested. No. This dude is not used to receiving positive reinforcement. I was left speechless. All I could manage to do was stare at you with a smile. But when our eyes met, I got flustered and looked down. How is she not disgusted by me? There it is. Even more positive reinforcement. That's interesting. Even if you don't always show up, I don't think that makes you a shut it. Right. That is actually... that is fact. No, you're fine! Going to school kills you? You're just not... well... I feel like that's just another exaggeration, I think. And look at that! And that's exactly... Wow. Okay! I never thought I'd ever hear someone say that to me. What the hell was respectable about a total loser like me? A gentle smile had spread over Yua's face. A smile so sweet it could cure any disease. That was genuinely what I thought in that moment. Exactly, even though it's so hard, he still made the effort. Yeah, most people wouldn't choose to do things that cause them pain. There we go. She likes listening to you talk about your fixations and your interests. What? What in the? What the hell? What was with all this validation? Why did? Hearing it make me feel so good about myself. It, it felt like Yua was embracing me all the way down to my core. Like... She was giving me the right to be here. To, to exist in this moment. It felt like when I was with her, maybe I could even be a normal person again. Ah, 
I hadn't realized until now, but almost all the students were already gone. Everyone had made their way into the school building. Um, later. Oh. And again, she's wanting to hang out with you. She wants to walk home with you, dude. With a timid tone, Yua mumbled her words, a faint blush on her cheeks. The courtyard. Okay. Hopefully our character will do so. This girl is giving this dude so many chances here. It's funny. It's something that I brought up earlier where, like, this character is an enigma to me. He will think one thing, but as soon, he'll think like the most degenerate shit, but as soon as somebody gives him the time of day to talk to him, he shuts himself in and is unable to show off any of that bravado that he was spouting off earlier. It, it is... Mm. Okay. You about elegantly then darted off toward the third year classrooms. I watched her disappear into the building. Then I pinched my cheek. It really wasn't a dream. Or a delusion. I couldn't focus on my classes all day after that. Or rather, I didn't bother trying to focus. I just rested my head on my hand, staring sluggishly into the autumn sky outside the window. My teachers, my classmates, None of them ever paid any attention to me. But Yua did. Yua was different from the other shitbags at this school. I couldn't stop thinking about her. I couldn't stop having delusions about her. And before I knew it, classes were over for the day. Yo, Taku. Hey, Battler. Um, her name's Yua. Please don't refer to her as Glasses, chick. Well, the negative reinforcement of calling me a neat is not helpful, my dude. I don't know. I feel like even if you are on friendly terms, having this negative reinforcement is a little bit not. It's it's not very healthy. So, so Especially for this character, who's clearly starved of some level of positive reinforcement. Notwithstanding that his sister does try to help, but you know. Siblings don't necessarily get along, sometimes. Right. Huh? And unfortunately, there it is. He's also trying to reinforce the shut-in. It's about time you get out of your got out of your shut-in phase, ain't it? That right there is against again, he is kind of like trying to get him to come out of his shell, but he's using the negative terminology that has been constantly thrown and labeled on our main character. He's being helpful, but he's going about it the wrong way. <laughs> Even him, he's now trying, there it is, I'm not a shut-in. He's trying to now kind of go against that now. And that wasn't even what this was about. But there was no point in trying to explain that to Misumi-kun. 
a guy who only fought with the wrong head. So ignoring how puzzled Misumi-kun was, I quickly made my way out of the classroom. Make your way to the courtyard, meet up with you, oh, goddammit. Uh, the shortest path from here to the courtyard is through the skyway to the third year building, and then down the stairs, I think. I didn't come to school enough often to have a good grasp on the layout. I didn't even know where half the club rooms were. So I was a little bit anxious as I walked down the hallway to the next building. <sighs> Hello, new face! Purple... Purple hair. Intense expression. She, uh... Hmm. Well, I dig the purple hair, but um, could you not stare at me with those uh, angry looking eyes, please? As I walked, I noticed a girl standing alone in the middle of the hall, staring up at the sky. Her face looked stiff, so despite her looking out the window, it wasn't in the wistful kind of way. She was ob obviously in everyone's way, but she didn't seem to care in the slightest. I know you can hear me walking toward you. Move along, will you? I'm in a bit of a hurry here. I was getting real DQN vibes from her, and I didn't want anything to do with it. So I tried to keep my distance, and slip by Girl B without getting noticed. Oi. What? <laughs> oh shit, was she talking to me? Ah, oh, fuck, 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 was she gonna threaten me and take all my money? Or take me to the DQN hangout spot and have me lynched? Just because she didn't like my face? Or worse? G -g 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 Give me a fucking break! What had I ever done to deserve this? I looked toward Girl B. She was staring at me. Um, ta uh, the name's Takumi. Also, I have somebody that I have to go meet up with. I do not want to uh, deal with you at the moment. Even if you are wearing permanently one of my favorite colors, I am sorry. Um, I am preoccupied at the moment. <laughs> Did she just ask me that? I'm Nishijo Takami, but this is the first time I've ever spoken to her, so obviously she wouldn't know that. So I was right. Whatever she wants of me, it can't be good. <laughs> Just run past her! Run past her, dude! I quickly bowed to avoid looking girl be in the face, and then ran away as fast as I could. RUN! <laughs> After bolting through the hall, down the stairs, and out the door, I shot a look behind me at the third year building. It seemed like the scary girl hadn't come after me. I was safe. To com be completely honest, I was getting tired of all this bullshit. Wherever I went in the third dimension, I was always running into another goddamn trap. I took a second to catch my breath, and then looked for the courtyard. The courtyard was between the school building and the pool. It was so narrow, it was more like a path than an actual garden. There were a few evenly spaced flower beds spread across the courtyard. The violet-colored flowers were especially eye-catching. What kind of flowers are those? I wondered. Uh, but I really didn't have a clue. And staying in front of the flower beds was none other than Yua. She stood still, gazing at the flowers listlessly. She's got a new expression too, like that. Looks like it's like she's sad or something. At the flowers? Just like she'd promised. She'd really waited for me here. She'd waited for me. And me alone. You uh, hadn't betrayed me. Maybe I could trust her. Maybe she really was the savior I'd been looking for. Uh. Yua looked up and noticed me standing there. And a moment later, her eyes widened. I got shy and looked away, frozen in place. Uh, should I walk toward her? I didn't know. You're, you're not used to this, are you? Why was she so surprised? Maybe I maybe I shouldn't have come. But as I was lost in thought, Yua ran over to me. You're surprised I actually showed up? Huh? Hey! Yeah! Yeah, we, we, we actually... It, okay, that also adds a little bit of something. Like, even though she's barely known me... She immediately, uh, she asked to meet me here, but she had that level of thought in her head where, like, well, he, he's antisocial, and I literally just asked him, there's, he's probably not going to show up. I mean, if he didn't even respond to my emails, then there's a high chance that he didn't show up. 
Realistic. Like, look at that. I was so close to giving up thinking you weren't going to come. Look at that. There you go. I was taken aback. You was thinking the same way as me. We both had the same pessimistic mindset. But there was one clear place that we differed. Whenever I had negative thoughts, I'd freeze up and do nothing. But whenever Yua had negative thoughts, she'd take action anyway. I, I seriously respected her initiative. I wanted to be like that too. Like, look at this! A positive influence on his life that might actually help him out. This is good! And he's starting... Okay. How are they going to fuck this up? <laughs> she timidly asked me and I nodded in response. Go ahead, walk home together. You got this. Walking side by side, the two of us passed through the school gate. It was a little embarrassing. It felt like other students were staring daggers at me. G green with envy. And the more aware of that I became, the more anxious I got. I guess I was right. I really can't walk home alone with a girl. Mm -hmm. Who the hell are you, random ass faceless person? We crossed paths with a teacher I'd never seen before. Oh, a teacher? Or at least I assumed he was a teacher, since he was wearing a suit instead of a school uniform. That dude looked at the most generic looking character design. But wasn't he a little young to be a teacher? Uh, well, I hardly ever came to school, so it only made sense that I wouldn't know what half the teachers looked like. Hell, sometimes I even forgot what my homeroom teacher looked like. The teacher in the suit was looking around restlessly as he headed for the school building. Oh, hmm? uh, no, sorry, I got distracted. Uh. Not knowing how to react, I quickly shook my head, returned to U.S. side, and went back to walking with her. Yes, yes, positive reinforcement. Come on, man, you got this. Don't fuck it up. We'd said we'd walk home together, but my base was only ten minutes from school. Meanwhile, Yua needed all the, to go all the way to Shinsen Station, so I needed to accompany her before I could go home. But by force of habit, I led Yua into Shoto Park. Uh, the park was something of a shortcut on my route to school, saving me about a minute each way. <laughs> Um, I think so. About oh wait, wait, wait. I think I think that was actually brought up before where like he does stop by here to eat breakfast. I think. No. Uh, mm. Yeah. Okay. So I was right. I'm glad I remember that. How did she know that? She's been watching me for a long time, apparently. If she noticed that I tend to eat... Wait, but then again, that also implies that she probably walks through here herself, too, to get to school. But if she... But wait a minute, no. Her... She has to go to Shinsen Station, which is probably a different... Hmm. Okay, now things are starting to sound a little bit weird. いや。あ、別にそれがダメって言ってるわけじゃなくてですね。素朴な疑問だったので。うん、うん。You well, yeah, because despite all of this, I really do consider the main character to just be depressed. He strikes me as somebody that re relies heavily on escapism, which is sad. And I mean... Not sad as in disappointing, as in sad as in I can empathize, and that... 
I wish that they were in a better headspace. Yua bent forward slightly, gently stroking the back of the bench. The bench was right in front of the fence by the pond. Whenever you sat on it, you could just stare out at the pond without needing to worry about whether others might be looking at you. It was right by the water mill, too, making it even more inconspicuous. That was another huge plus. Damn. You got so worried that you had even trouble eating. You've been on this girl's mind, dude. R really? I had never noticed her looking at me when I was here. No? It shows that you... I wouldn't say it's silly. It shows that you have a very... Uh, I, I'm trying to find the right words here. You have a... Okay, you know, simple. You have a very caring personality. You have a... A very big heart, or you're just incredibly empathic. Where if you see somebody that looks sad, it makes you sad too. Like you can feel and resonate with the feelings of people that you see. That's what I'm getting. And you lacking the courage to stand up is another thing that you have in common with him is you both are... As he stated, you both have a pessimistic side. So her initial stalking was an extension of that. Or maybe not stalking, per se. Maybe she'd just been looking out for me. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you guys sit down there for a little bit? I didn't really have much of a reason to refuse. I nodded my head, still facing out toward the lake. You had placed her bag on top of the bench and quietly took a seat. She then strained her posture and gazed out at the lake. It was so incredibly quiet, so incredibly serene, and Yua was sitting right by my side. A gentle breeze drew ripples on the water and it softly swayed you his hair. Was this what it felt like to be a normie? The situation was so ordinary, so casual. So why did I feel like I was about to cry? Yeah, I can imagine. I looked at the side of Yua's face as she whispered that. If life were in a rogue, this is where she'd confess her love. Then we'd lean in, kiss, and the good ending credits would roll. And who knows, if the situation called for it, maybe we'd get straight into some exhibitionism. JK. <laughs> oh my god. God damn it, dude. <laughs> Eating breakfast here? Yua turned and looked up at me. Unable to find the words to say, I looked down at Yua's bag. Cursing my inability to maintain eye contact with a girl, I stared instead at the three garrow froggy straps hanging from her bag. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Okay, so we have ourselves a delusion here. I'm worried. Everything from the moment has been incredibly positive. I'm just going to say that right now. These, 
I don't know how long I've been recording at this. Probably not that long. Everything from right from the beginning of this recording session up to here has been really, really good. I feel like if I gave in to one of these delusions, it would ruin the pacing. Because if I choose red, something horrible is going to happen. If I choose green... Uh, I don't know. This is like one of those novels where it's not going to be like... It's funny. There are some novels where I go like on the 100% completion rate, especially if they got like multiple endings, like let's go Stein Gates Zero and stuff like that because I love the fucking narrative of those more serious stories. And then, I don't know, I think that's part of the reason why I'm so picky whenever it comes to visual novels that I read, where if it feels like it's just there to serve as some sort of dating sim it's not really my cup of tea I've always been more of a I just want a damn good story vibe rather than that sort of thing so it's it makes me feel like I don't even feel incentive to try to do these delusion triggers because the the examples I have been given are holy shit or holy shit So, honestly feel like I'd be kind of cheating people out of watching this if I'm not even trying to partake in whatever the game mechanics of this is. I'm going to try to go for the green one. I, I don't know. As I stated, it feels like I, I, don't, I, I don't feel incentive to even do these delusion triggers. The only thing, the only incentive I feel like these things even serve is simply curiosity, I would say. Whenever it came to other novels, if there are other choices that I am given, I feel incentive because I actually want to see how these turn out. However, here we have a main character who I can't really trust his judgment skills, and I as I have seen, he once had a delusion about his own sister that was incestual. Or the other one where she just fucking dies. The closest to a somewhat positive delusion that we've had was probably his first interaction with Yua. Where it was not even that crazy. So here's hoping that nothing bad happens. Hold on. Wait a minute. Something about this scene was really nagging at me. And that thing was... The Garrow Froggies. Characters that were popular with high school girls. But I'd seen those exact ones before, hadn't I? Where, though? Uh oh, that's right. Nanami had one attached to her cell phone. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, see, see, he about fucked it up here. He was about to have a negative reaction and think, what, did my sister put you up to this? And that would have ruined everything. I bet you that's what would have happened if I would have went with red. If I would have went with red, he would have thrown everything everything away because he became paranoid that this is all a plot that his sister set up. That's what I'm thinking. So, just, okay. Yeah, it's perfectly normal. What did I think was so strange about it? I was just paranoid over nothing. I'm so stupid. Nanami did say that Gero Froggies were super popular with high school girls, so really, it should come as no surprise that Yua had some too. Yep, nothing out of the ordinary here. Not even slightly. 
Sometimes having such a big imagination really sucked. And with how terrifying my delusions could be, it got so, so much worse. <laughs> hmm? Yu was looking at me, tilting her head in confusion. Not knowing how to reply, I just forced a smile. Uh, it... So, so, Mm hmm Huh? What kind of reaction was that? Why had her expression turned so... stiff? Did... Had I said something wrong? All I'd done was mention the Garrow Froggies as a conversation starter, nothing else, so then... Why? <laughs> why had her... smile... That gentle smile she'd had this entire time suddenly vanished. Why did she hang her head as if she d didn't even want to look at me? I couldn't tell what kind of expression she was making anymore. It all gave me a terrible feeling I couldn't just shake. When I first laid eyes on those three Garo froggies hanging from her bag, I'd been hit by a massive sense of deja vu. Looking back, I guess my instincts were right. I had seen those Gero froggies somewhere before. And now that I'd mentioned them, Yua was freaking out. Suspicion slowly crept through my head until it completely took over my mind. I wanted to trust Yua, but I didn't know if I should. Her voice lacked even the least bit of composure. <laughs> you don't find them cute, but... Some friends started giving them to you, and before you knew it, you already had three of them. Okay. The more Yua spun her tail, the more artificial it felt. She wasn't looking at me. She didn't even try to. Her smile was gone, even though until that very moment she had been so gentle, so sweet. I started to feel dead inside. Please don't say any more, I begged inside my head. A closer look? Yua reached out for her bag, trying to take the Gero Froggy straps off of it. Her hands were trembling. She frantically tried to pull them off of her bag, but they just wouldn't budge. Yua pulled on the straps a bit too hard, causing the bag to fall off the bench. The bag was unzipped, so all of her notebooks and textbooks spilled out onto the ground. Uh, uh, Just a few minutes ago, I might have thought of Yua's ditziness as moe, but at the present moment I was just frozen in place. And that was because one of the fallen notebooks had flipped open. Tons of notes and newspaper snippets were scattered across the ground. It looked like some sort of scrapbook. And all the notes, all the newspaper snippets, everything was focused on a certain string of cases. And its name was written there clear as day. New Gen. Not the... My voice came out ragged. Yua, in a panic, started frantically gathering everything up and shoving it back into her bag. <laughs> Once she did, she held the bag close to her chest and stood up. She looked toward me and nodded, her expression intensely uncomfortable. Her smile from before was nowhere to be found. So, so
Yua didn't answer. Why wouldn't she talk to me? Please, just say something. Anything. Even still, she said nothing. Which meant she must have realized that she'd been caught red-handed. I'd wanted to trust her so badly. And I'd been just starting to think that maybe Yua was actually on my side. That she could have been an ally. I really should have seen that coming. You can't trust anyone. Don't listen to anything that anyone says. In the end, Sewa was right. 3D girls were the worst pieces of shit imaginable. Every last one. And now he's immediately downward spiraling and now he is reverting into... You never liked me at all. She only wanted to get close because she had ulterior motives. Maybe she wanted to turn me into the police. Or maybe she wanted to blackmail me. God damn it, God fucking damn it! I'd almost forgotten all about that incident. Yet here we go again. The police had never questioned me, so I thought that maybe, just maybe, I could go on pretending it had nothing to do with me. All I wanted to do was to get away from those stupid murders, so why? What the hell was you really after here? No, I, I didn't even care anymore. I just wanted to run away as far as, as far away as I could, so I went to turn around. But... Yua quickly grabbed my wrist. Her voice sent chills down my spine. Her tone was so cold. It felt like my body might freeze over. It didn't even feel like she was the same person. It wasn't the Yua I thought I knew. And her grip... <gasps> her grip was way tighter than I'd have expected. It wasn't normal. Jolts of pain ran through my arm. My bones felt like they were being crushed. I tried to shake her off me, but she wouldn't let go. In fact, she was pulling me toward her, practically pinning my arm behind my back. From behind me, right by my ear, I heard a whisper that crushed any emotion I had left. With a shiver, I slowly turned around. <laughs> Hello there. You must be the real Yua. She was staring at me. There was no longer any color left in those eyes of hers. I really have no choice in the matter, do I? I'm sorry for lying to you, but it's not like I was the only one. How many people? Yes, I may be hiding some things, that is true. I'm hiding things? Like what you saw? Only a single thing crossed my mind. Somehow she knew that I had witnessed that staking murder. She knew that I had seen the perpetrator. And that was most likely why she tried to get close to me. I knew she was good. Too good! She'd had me wrapped around her little finger. Everything she told me was a lie. Her taking an interest in me from, what, from just one glance? Her liking Bloodtoon? Her arranging to go with me to go pick up the Sarah Post Awakening version figure from the store when it went on sale? All her nice little comments as she'd listened to what I had to say. Her wanting to get to know me better. Her being worried about me when I didn't come to school. Her saying that she respected me. Everything, everything that came from her mouth had been a lie. That thought killed me inside. I was overwrought with grief. I tightly clenched my fists. Fuck, fuck, fuck! Why had I believed a single fucking thing she'd said? Yeah, so there's no point pretending. Hi! Pleasure to meet ya. Name's Takumi, so you're Yua. Something you want to ask? I kind of have no choice in the matter. 
聞かないなんて言わないよね。Yes, ma'am. あなたは聞くべきよ。Okay, we get it. You want me to listen? Understood. Fine, just say, say it. 聞いて。I fucking talk! 聞くでしょ。聞かないなら。If you won't listen. <laughs> What? What'll happen if I don't listen? You was almost a completely different person now. The gentle and carefree atmosphere from before was completely gone now. She felt completely unapproachable now. The atmosphere felt bizarre, like one molded from utter obsession. Her tone was as composed as could be. The perhaps cold as ice was a better description. Her usual femininity was completely gone. Ironically, you're literally the character archetype of a certain lady that I really like in Stein's Gate that apparently some people don't like. No, I didn't want to listen. I tried to cover my ears, but I couldn't. You was holding on to one of my arms. Her grip was weaker than a second ago, but she still didn't let go. I couldn't move my hand. And while we were in that deadlock, she took a dark, gray, shiny object from her bag and held it out to me. It's the cross, isn't it? Yes! <gasps> I was petrified. She found it in my room. She found it in my room, and that's how, like, she. That moment that she was in the room and she fell and was looking around, that's whenever she grabbed it. My heart skipped a beat. Any composure I had left was gone. I was so shocked. The hand that was going to cover my ear just fell to my side. Before long, Yua's voice, now sounding almost regretful, reached my ears. Yeah, I've seen this cross. Yep. Of course. I'd definitely seen it before. I wasn't sure what it was at first, but I quickly realized. It might have looked like a cross, but it was in fact a stake. And stakes with such a unique shape were not something you'd see every day. Or at the very least, I'd only come across them once. That night, scattered across that alleyway. That night, as the demon girl nailed them into the wall. That night, as a corpse was being nailed onto the wall. Yep, I know. Yes, I do. I definitely do. I will not dare to claim that I do not know because I do know. Yes, it would be very odd if I didn't know, but I do know. And I know you know I know. You know? Yes, ma'am. I frantically shook my head in denial. A disgusting cold sweat broke out on my brow. All I could do was wipe it away as I kept shaking my head as hard as I could. Knew it. I knew it. She's. Yeah, that's how she knows, because she found this in my room. <laughs> it was that moment that she was stumbling around and trying to clean stuff up. That's when she found it, and that had confirmed in her mind that I had witnessed what happened. Which is why she then. Focused so intensely on trying to get close to me. Yep. Under the. Wait, it was under the bed. It is interesting now how her manner of speech has devolved into like an outline. Like, she's now. In painstaking detail, maybe not painstaking detail, but she is like listing it and narrowing it down to the point where I can't even、uh, fight back on it, you know? Just, uh, you know. Either way, that's where it was. <laughs> Who the hell was this girl? When the fuck had she searched my room? Was it the day we'd first met? When my leg got injured and she'd come all the way to my room with me? When she'd seen my Seder figures and her face lit up all cute like a fucking Christmas tree? This 
Manufa- Wait, oh, that's interesting. It was manufactured abroad? So it's not even from here. Who the hell just buys a shit ton of metal stakes to impale people with? L let me guess. Last name Impaler, first name Vlad? Yep. The new gen murders. The exact same one. Uh -huh. And she, again, her dialogue is strictly just focusing. Actually, wait a minute. I just realized something. It's almost like she's speaking messages on a board. Like she has to input the sentence, hit enter, input the sentence, hit enter, and just constant, that's how, she, that's, that's what her dialogue style is kind of reminding me of. The same as the ones used to nail that corpse onto the wall. I was convinced. This woman thought that I was the culprit behind New Gen. She thought I was some kind of insane cutthroat murderer. Did you think she was a detective or something? What? Did she call herself Kusanoki Yua, ace high school detective, or some shit? A fucking kill yourself, actually. That shit might have worked in anime or video games. But this was real life, and little did she know, her reasoning had a fatal flaw. I knew who the real killer was. I'd seen her with my own two eyes. I'd seen that demon myself. Sure, I didn't know her name, but she'd been wearing the Sumai uniform, which meant that she was someone I could know. <laughs> Yua suddenly hung her head and let out a small sigh. She loosened her grip on my wrist even more, then finally let go. <laughs> to be honest, I really wasn't intending to question you about it. You were going to play the long game to get more trust, but then we kind of figured out that you were, that, you know, yeah, we kind of figured this out. And now she's back to her kind of default-esque expression that she was holding. Back whenever we thought we knew who she was. What the fuck has she meant by yet? Okay, what do you want to know? What? Precognitive powers? Hold on. Precognitive powers? That's an interesting question. This guy's ho Wait a minute, where'd this come from? This guy's hopeless. A quotation from a popular manga about Death Note. There was a fucking Death Note reference. Spoken by the protagonist in reference to his foolish accomplice. The full quote is, This guy's hopeless. I better do something quick. Oh my god. Precognition. To note what is going to know what is going to happen in advance. To foresee an unusual phenomena, also known as foresight or foreknowledge. Foreknowledge. Uh, sorry. To know what is going to happen in the future before it actually happens. The term does not refer to predictions based on experience, information, or statistics, but rather a special sense that transcends humanity's natural perception. It has not been scientifically proven to exist. The way it manifests differs from person to person, with the most common being visions and prophetic dreams. Belief in precognition had existed since ancient times, where shrine maidens were often heralded as carriers. Psychics and fortune tellers are the modern incarnation of this belief. But there are many false actors who enjoy taking advantage of the superstition, claiming that they have precognitive powers in order to swindle others. Wait a minute. Oh, now this is actually giving me... Now I'm getting interested. Precognition. What if that's somehow connected to our main character's delusions? What if it's not legitimately a mental thing and he legitimately has some sort of precognitive ability? Potentially. It just, 
Oh, ooh, ooh. But rather than predicting the future, he's potentially predicting or seeing, in, glimpsing into alternative realities. Huh? Excuse me? I couldn't help but just stand there with my mouth open. Precognitive powers? What the fuck? What did that have to do with the incidents? I tilted my head to the side, utterly perplexed. As I did, Yua's hand retreated into her bag once more before taking out a picture printed in full color. Right here is an unaccountable digital picture that can only be explained by precognitive powers. Wait, so... Okay, is that implying that she has a digital picture that shouldn't exist? Okay, what's this picture? The picture was that grotesque one Shogun had sent me! Why did Yua have it? Wait a minute. What's that in the, in the lower left? Is that more there? I think there's supposed to be... Wait a minute! Is that me? Like, I can see, like, the hair and... Is that supposed to be me? Could I... Why do you have an image that depicts the third new gen case? This image leaks the day before the incident. Oh. That's the same person that the pink haired girl had killed, but this happened before. This picture happened before it actually was carried out. Ooh. Oh my god, the novel has finally gotten me intrigued in the idea. It was in the catch of the PC. How the... I'd gotten that image earlier that day when I chatted with Shogun. I hadn't made it myself. I downloaded it, so it must still be in a minute of my history. Uh, that's it. I'll just show you that. Still, though, how had Yua even gotten this image in the first place? She'd said it had been in my computer's catch, but how would she have known that? When Yua had come into my room, she definitely hadn't had the time to snoop around my PC. Masaka. You Shogun. Is she Shogun? Was she trying to frame me? It was all set up by Yua. She was the new gen killer, and now she was going to use me as a scapegoat in order to throw off the police, wasn't she? It, it was all too much. Why did it have to be me of all people? Was it because I was a freak? Was it because I had no friends? <laughs> Yua didn't say a word. She just shook her head lightly. <laughs> I got this image from the PC in room 37 at the at cafe. Oh! Did you find it? It almost felt like she turned back into the Yua I knew, if only for a moment. And while that happened, she started fishing around in her bag once more. But this time she took out a page with text on it, and then held it out to me. I had a bad feeling about this. Alarm bells were going off in my head telling me not to look. But there was no way I could ignore it, because if I did, then I'd surely end up being framed. What's on it? Everything on there, everything there is you? What? What the hell was that supposed to mean? Did, did, did that mean she had all my personal information too? Was you some sort of hacker? I reached out and grabbed the printout, all while my heart was pounding out of my chest, but to my surprise, the page didn't have my personal information. It was just some chat log. Huh. The two members of the chat log were Neidhart and Shogun.
all of the links that Chogun posted. Yeah, the log is exceptionally strange. <laughs> What's so strange about it? it? Looked like a perfectly normal chat log to me. I definitely remembered having this conversation with Shogun. Uh huh. She was so scary. What are you trying to say? Hey, what was that link from earlier? Should I just take the bait already? Hmm. Night to Haruto to Shogun no. What about the timestamp? Whoa! Wait a minute! Holy... What the fuck? Oh, I just noticed the timestamps are wrong! Shogun's messages are on the 29th, but... Our messages are on the 28th. Huh? How did... What? Whoa, what the fuck? No! They don't! They don't match up at all! Oh. And you just now noticed it too. Huh? What the hell? How is this possible? Right, but Shogun's messages are at 7 p.m. on the 29th of September. You went to school on Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The same day the Shogun's messages were sent. What, what was she talking about? You inspected the chat logs in room 37's PC. For just a moment, Yua hesitated. Then she stared straight at me before breaking the cold, unfeeling truth to me. Okay, but how could I be Shogun and Nightheart at the same time? How? Don't look at me. Shogun. This Shogun. Don't look at me. What? I don't want to see anything. I don't want to hear anything. Time is not a constant. There are con yeah, there's definitely contradictions in your memory, dude. There are errors in my... Yeah, there's definitely errors. No, the Earth is definitely spinning. No, it's not a game. What? Groucho soft? That's funny. What the... Wait, where are we... I stuffed my mouth with some fish sausage as I turned on my PC. I'm not me? Wait, do you actually have like a split personality or something? Or a disassociative identity disorder? Before long, my monitor shone brightly with my Seraton wallpaper. I went straight to Esso and opened it up without an ounce of hesitation. Finished chapter one. Chapter two. Click me. Ah. <sighs> 
Huh?